Hey, if you're watching this, you probably know that Elemental released version 3.8 for the free version and the pro version over the weekend. And they introduced two big things that is worth talking about. Number one, the Flexbox container has gone from alpha to beta. You can almost hear everyone say, finally, I mean, we're not at the final version yet, but is it a step in the right direction? Please be aware, though, if you have been using Flexbox Container, the class IDs and names for some of them have changed, so go and check the change log or review any CSR you have been using. Now, I am still a little bit cautious over using Flexbox Container because it is in beta mode still, and I would rather wait till the final version. That being said, let's come on to item number two, which actually does need you to use Flexbox Container to make it work. So there's a bit of a contradiction and a paradox going on there, so I will still be using it. But item number two is the loop builder. Why am I so excited? Well, okay, fine, look, the, the thing about posts and when you were doing WooCommerce products in Elemental is you were always a little bit restricted in what you could show and do. And the people started using like other plugins uh, to kind of um, rearrange items. You know, at the moment you get the image over here, the headline, you might have the excerpts and metadata and the button at the bottom. What if you want the button to actually be above the image or the other way around? Or you want the header to be above the image or to the left or right of it or anything like that? You are always restricted as to what you could do. Loop Builder opens the door for you to do whatever you want. However, I did mention WooCommerce. That is not available yet for you to use. That will be coming on the scenes eventually at some point. But right now, if you've got Flexbox Container activated, and loop box builder, whatever, activated as well uh, in your settings, you can go and use them. Let's go and get them activated first. Obviously, you're gonna have to make sure you got Elemental and Elemental Pro updated to version 3.8. If you're not getting the notification for doing this, log into elemental.com and download a zip file and then go to add new for your plugins, install and it will replace it. Please do make sure though that if you are doing anything I mentioned today, you have got a backup, maybe a staging site, try and stay safe. Then go to Elemental and go to Settings. Then go to Experiments. Scroll down until you get to, down here we go, Flexbox Container. You wanna make sure that this is active like that and this new feature will now appear. This will not be here until you update to version 3.8. So we are gonna make sure that Flexbox Container and Loop are both activated. Then scroll down and hit Save. Now inside Elemental, I'm gonna to go to Templates and I'm gonna click Add New and I'm gonna create a new archive. I'm gonna call this one Loop Archive just so I know which one it is and click create template. Now I'm not gonna use any of the standard templates that it gives me, I could do, but I'm gonna build one completely from scratch. What we have over here is basically nothing. I'm gonna click this and I'm gonna create a one container. Remember though, we are working with containers now because Flexbox is activated. Into here, I'm now gonna put the loop grid. Um, it's loop builder, but it's called loop grid. So I'm gonna pick that up and drop that in. Now, as soon as you do that, it splits into a grid of three. We got block one, block two, block three, or section one, section one, section one, whatever you wanna call it. What we're now gonna do is create a template where we get to define how it looks. Now, don't worry about this because when you go here to query, and then you go to pagination, which is just pagination anyway. You don't have the option to now define on the number of columns or rows. And you might look and go, I don't want three. I want four or five or two. What do I do here? Don't worry. Once you've built it, you will have the ability to now modify that. Okay, so don't worry about that. First thing we're going to do is click create template. And we're just going to hit save changes there and let it do that. What we now have are some familiar bits and pieces like post title, excerpt, featured image. If I was to go and pick up featured image and drop that in there, I will get a featured image of one of my posts. I'm just gonna go and set that to be full. You can change the alignment. And again, look, you're from all the stuff you're familiar with in Elemental, like the styling options and stuff like that, you have got all of that there for you. Let me just get rid of that number one there. If we go back over here, we also have the post title. I'm going to pick that up. And now, normally when you create a post, the title and the excerpt are below the image. What if I now want to pop the image up like that? Sorry, pop the image up like that. Pop the title above. It is now coming through. And all of a sudden, you can see where we're going with this, right? I mean, I could go back. I'm not going to style this, by the way, okay? I'm just 
going through and showing you how it worked. I could pick up the post excerpt and I can now pop the post excerpt over there. I could pop it above if I want. But I do want to show you how you can be a little bit creative. Now, look, you do have other options like post info. Let me just pop that in here. This is going to be your metadata. Um, obviously, I haven't set the style over this for this. There we go, right? You can start to define that. You can decide as well what contents you want to show. So maybe you don't want to show the date or the number of comments or things like that. But you, you are not restricted into just using what you get here. Here's what's really cool, okay? If we go back over to this heading here or this post title, that is using the post title, okay? No matter what you do, it's always going to be the post title. But what if I want to do something a little different? I'm not going to go down a heading and I'm going to drop in a heading over here. Why would I put it there? Okay, come on, let's be a bit, let's just put it down here, okay? We're going to pop the post heading there. I'm not going to use the words here. In fact, I'm not going to put any words in. I'm going to click the dynamic tag and I'm going to pull through a custom field. Now, if you haven't added any custom fields, as my big recommendation is that you just go over to your plugins, go to add new. And one of my favorite ones is the pods one, which is this. It's a pretty simple and easy one to use because it comes with the custom post types and fields. If you're not worried about the custom post type, go and use advanced custom fields. Again, super easy. Why do you need a custom post type? Well, maybe, at, well, at the moment we just have posts, right? It's just posts. What if you want to create a different post type, which is houses, a different post type for web designers, cars, what you can then do is define the fields that sit in there. Now, I'm really, really quickly just going to go in and install this, and I'm just going to add in a couple of fields to my current posts. So this is slightly elongating. You can skip this bit if you want. Go and look at the timestamp so you can basically see what I do in the custom field. But I'm very quickly just going to do something extra here. I'm just going to go over to my pods down here. I'm going to go to add new pod. I'm just going to basically uh, add some custom fields to my current post. So I'm not creating a custom post type. I'm just adding in custom fields. Okay, we're going to click that. I'm just going to click add field and I'm going to create a field called power. And I'm going to um, change this to be a, look, you've got plain text, website, phone, email, anything like that. I'm going to call it relationship. I'm going to say that it is a custom defined list. And in this list, I'm going to say laser beams. There we go. I just made a custom field up. All right, we're going to save that field. Okay, right, we are done. And I go into any one of these. Let's just go into post one. There's post one with the content and the image and nothing else fancy. But look down here. We now have a custom field. I'm going to click that and go, well, okay, let's go and pick flying. And then I hit update. I've very quickly done it to all three and given them a different power in a way. But here's what's really cool. Okay, I can go down here. Click on the dynamic tag now, scroll down and look at this, I've got pods. If you were using advanced custom fields, it would say custom fields or ACF or anything like that. I am going to pick in a pods field and when I click the spanner or the wrench, I can now pick what field that was. And look, I've got all these extra fields that I could use as well, but there's the one I want, which is power. And there you go, look at it. It's come through. And if I now hit update, it will appear on all of them. And you can have as many custom fields as you want. I'm not going to stylize this. Let me just hit edit template again. I refreshed the page so it pulled it through for the other two as well. You can do whatever you want to it. Okay, background color, rearrange it, margins, padding, anything like that. This is going to give you the ability to create dynamic custom bespoke posts basically okay you can use the fields that you already get you can add extra fields to your post to standardize like why did i even add that field in maybe you've got someone else creating the post and you want to ensure they always pick a power maybe that's used for a filter later on down the line this allows you to add things in and, and you are not limited to just doing it this way either. What if I want to go a step further? I'm going to get rid of some of the fields that we've got in here, okay? And I'm just going to leave the post title and the featured image. I'm going to go and get the call to action widget, which is one of my favorite and underappreciated widgets out there. I'm going to drop that in. And now it looks a little bit like, oh, that's not, you know, looking so great now. I mean, obviously, you've got a bit of a layout going on there. I am going to change this to be a cover layout like that. So now the words are over the layout. Where we have the word image, I'm going to click the dynamic tag and I'm going to change that to say featured image. I'm now going to go to my content. 
where it says title, I'm going to basically get rid of that, click on the dynamic tag, and I'm now going to pick post title. Like, can you see what we're doing here? I could change the wording of the button text or even bring forward the power one if I so wanted as well. I'm going to go down to ribbon. Um, I'm going to ensure it's activated in a way. I'm going to go down here and pick pods field, hit the spanner or the wrench, and I'm going to now pick uh, power. By the way, you could over here put down a word before or after as well. So I could put in the word like power like that, and it's going to bring it through. Obviously, be aware of how big your words are and what you've got here. I've probably not thought about this very well because my wording like laser beams might be too big. But I've got the word now appearing there. And you can decide it's on the left or the right or however you're going to have it. I can left align the words like that. I can mess around with the padding of the content as well. I've messed around with the styling. I mean, I haven't done it very well. This is a really bad image, even though you do get the overlay effect when you hover over it. But what you can do here is when you go to hover effects, again, we're in the call to action widget with styling. You could change what happens with the wording or the background image as well. So I might just say the content um, uh, moves to the uh, left, maybe something like that. So when you hover over, it moves to the left like that and the background. And I refresh the page. This is a completely different style to what you're probably used to doing with the post widget. I could click on the container right now and I could change the direction to now be rows. I mean, look, this is going to look really ugly right now, okay, because I'm messing around now. But I could, if I want, have gone over here and said, right, it's now in rows. Um, I'm going to ensure that the wrap is on. So we're going to say wrap is allowed. Align content, I'm going to say flex from the start. It is now aligning. I could go over here to this title. Let's pretend it's a smaller title, okay? I'm going to go to custom whip and I'm going to set this to be, say, uh, 45%. I'm going to go to the image. I'm going to go to advanced. I'm going to go to the custom width of the image to be 45%. You always have to take into account there's a bit of spacing and gap as well. So now we've got them in line. I can go to this one over here. I mean, this is a ridiculous one I'm doing, right? This is so totally ridiculous. I'm going to make this be a 100% in width so it goes all the way across. Now, for the purpose of this example, I've gone back into my template and got rid of the title and the image that were at the top. So we just have this custom call to action fancy thing image going on. When you save and publish and come back in, you do now have the options to modify the number of columns. So if I now do two, well, you could see what it did. I didn't have to hit return. Okay, I could go with like four, for instance, or five or a uh, hundred. I didn't really do anything. Anyway, let's just put it back onto three. Okay, so you can now stylize this to be how you want. And how many posts are you going to show? Let's go with uh, a column three and we'll have up to nine. Um, the masonry is only really going to matter if you have different sized images and stuff like that. But, you know, it's up to you. And of course, don't forget the query option was always there for you to include and exclude terms and categories and things like that. And don't forget, you do have the exclude if you want to do offset. So if I do offset one like that, and if I was to put in a two, the latest two will not be visible. But, you know, have a think about if you want to include or exclude that. Hey, I hope you have a play with the loot box builder. Remember, you got to activate Flexbox container. You got to activate loop uh, box builder block, whatever it's called, okay? And then you can start to create your template. But don't feel restricted into just using the fields they give you. Think out the box. And you may no longer use other third-party plugins to get the kind of look you are going after. I'm Imran Web Squadron. Like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big swings, bitch, hand me the back.